The Intelligent Investor is a book written by Benjamin Graham, considered the father of value investing and one of the leading experts in fundamental analysis. Originally published in 1949, the book remains widely read and influential to this day. The book presents a solid and rational approach to investing in stocks and other financial instruments, focusing on fundamental analysis, which seeks to identify the intrinsic value of an asset based on its economic and financial fundamentals. Graham emphasizes the importance of smart, conscious investing as opposed to speculation and market play. One of the main ideas presented in the book is that of Mr. Mercado. Graham uses this metaphor to explain how the stock market can be irrational and emotional, offering opportunities for smart investors to take advantage of price fluctuations. He argues that rather than following the daily market swings, investors should focus on assessing a company's real value and buying shares when they trade at a price significantly below that value. Graham also introduces the notion of margin of safety. It encourages investors to buy assets with a margin of safety, that is, to purchase shares at a price substantially below their intrinsic value, to minimize the risk of losses and maximize the potential for profit. The margin of safety provides additional protection in case the market turns irrational or the company struggles. Additionally, Graham discusses different investment strategies such as properly diversifying an investment portfolio, using financial analysis and company reporting, the importance of tracking market performance and trends, and the need to avoid speculation and market gain. Throughout the book, Graham introduces various financial analysis concepts and techniques such as balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow analysis in order to help investors better understand the companies they are investing in and make informed decisions. In short, The Intelligent Investor is a book that provides valuable guidance on how to invest wisely and avoid emotional pitfalls. It promotes a disciplined, fundamentals-based approach and encourages investors to become business owners rather than mere speculators. The book remains a timeless guide for investors of all experience levels, offering solid principles that remain relevant decades after its original publication. Zero Two Fundamentalist Analysis Fundamental analysis is an approach used by investors to assess a company's true value and its long-term growth prospects. It is based on examining the company's economic and financial fundamentals rather than just focusing on short-term stock market fluctuations. The main reason fundamental analysis is important is that it provides a solid foundation for making informed investment decisions. By analyzing the company's fundamentals, such as its balance sheets, income statements, and cash flows, you gain a deeper understanding of how the company is performing financially. With fundamental analysis, you can assess whether the company is generating consistent profits over time, has a sound financial position, and has a viable business strategy. This information is essential in determining whether a company is a solid long-term investment. In addition, fundamental analysis helps identify a company's intrinsic value, i.e. the value it actually has based on its assets, cash flows, and future prospects. This allows you to compare a company's intrinsic value to its current market price. If the market price is significantly below the intrinsic value, this may indicate an investment opportunity, as the company may be undervalued by the market. Another important aspect of fundamental analysis is that it allows you to assess a company's growth potential. By analyzing factors such as the industry the company is in, its competitive advantages, its expansion strategies and its market positioning, you can identify companies with promising prospects for future growth. Fundamental analysis also helps to reduce investment risk. 
By examining the company's fundamentals, you can identify potential financial problems such as excessive debt, low profitability, or poor management. This information can alert you to companies that are more likely to face difficulties in the future. Furthermore, fundamental analysis provides a long-term perspective. Rather than being concerned with day-to-day -day stock market fluctuations, fundamental analysis focuses on a company's solid fundamentals and its long-term growth prospects. This helps you avoid making investment decisions based on emotions or volatile market behavior. In summary, fundamental analysis is important because it provides a solid foundation for making informed investment decisions. It allows you to assess a company's real value, its potential for growth and the risks involved. By using this approach, you can identify promising investment opportunities and make decisions more rationally and consciously, seeking to maximize your returns and reduce the risks associated with investments. 3. Differentiation Between Investment and Speculation Investment and speculation are two distinct approaches to getting involved in the financial markets. Understanding the differences between them is crucial to making informed decisions and managing risk. Investment can be defined as the allocation of capital with the aim of generating long-term returns. Investors focus on the underlying value of an asset, such as a stock or bond, and make decisions based on fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis involves assessing the financial health, profitability, growth potential, and other relevant factors of a company or asset. Investors generally have a longer time horizon and seek to build wealth gradually through capital appreciation and income generation. They seek to create a diversified portfolio based on an in-depth analysis of the underlying assets. Investors often consider factors such as earnings, cash flow, market share, competitive advantage and management quality to identify undervalued assets and seize long-term opportunities. On the other hand, speculation involves taking positions in assets with the expectation of short-term fluctuations in prices and profiting from market volatility. Speculators are more focused on market trends, momentum and technical analysis than on an asset's intrinsic value. They often rely on charts, patterns, and indicators to make trading decisions. Speculation carries a higher degree of risk and can be characterized by greater trading volume, frequent trades, and shorter holding periods. Speculators may seek to profit from rapid price movements, market inefficiencies, or even rumors and news events. They are generally less concerned with the underlying fundamentals of assets and more interested in taking advantage of short-term price discrepancies. While both investing and speculation involve risk, the key differentiating factors lie in the time horizon, underlying analysis, and focus on value. Investments are typically made with a long-term perspective, emphasizing the intrinsic value and growth potential of assets. Speculation, on the other hand, is driven by short-term price movements and market sentiment. Investing is often considered a more prudent and conservative approach, suitable for people who want to build wealth steadily over time. It aligns with principles of diversification, risk management, and long-term financial planning. Speculation, on the other hand, is more like a form of active trading, in which participants seek to capitalize on short-term opportunities. It requires a higher level of expertise active monitoring of market conditions, and a willingness to accept higher levels of risk. Importantly, speculation can be profitable, but it is also associated with greater potential for losses due to the uncertainties inherent in short-term price movements and market fluctuations. In conclusion, the fundamental difference between investment and speculation lies in the time horizon underlying analysis, and focus on value. 
Investors seek to generate long-term returns based on fundamental analysis of assets, while speculators focus on short-term price movements and market sentiment. Understanding these distinctions is crucial for individuals to align their investment approach with their financial goals, risk tolerance, and time horizons. For the concept of Mr. Market addressed in the book The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. In the book The Intelligent Investor, Benjamin Graham introduces the concept of Mr. Market as a metaphor to illustrate the volatile and unpredictable nature of the stock market. Mr. Market is described as an imaginary character that daily offers investors the opportunity to buy or sell their shares in companies at a certain price. The essence of Mr. Market lies in understanding that your emotions and moods influence stock prices. Sometimes Mr. Market is full of enthusiasm and optimism, driving stock prices to exaggerated and inflated levels. On such occasions, he may suggest that investors sell their shares at high prices. On the other hand, Mr. The Market can also be depressed and pessimistic, driving stock prices to low and undervalued levels. In these situations, it can present opportunities for investors to buy stocks at prices lower than their true intrinsic value. The core message Graham wants to convey with the concept of Mr. Market is that investors don't have to get carried away by the short-term fluctuations and emotional volatility of the stock market. Instead, he emphasizes the importance of taking a rational and reasoned approach, focusing on fundamental analysis of companies. Graham argues that smart investors should focus on determining a company's intrinsic value based on its financial health, historical performance, future prospects, and other relevant factors. By doing so, investors can identify discrepancies between a stock's market price and intrinsic value. If the market price is significantly below intrinsic value, the investor may perceive a buying opportunity. On the other hand, if the price is considerably above intrinsic value, the investor may consider selling or holding back on the stock until the price adjusts. By taking a grounded approach and not being swayed by short-term swings in the market, smart investors can benefit from Mr. Market. They may seize opportunities to buy undervalued stocks and sell overvalued stocks, seeking long-term profits. However, it is important to point out that Mr. The Market is not an infallible strategy and requires discipline and patience on the part of the investor. The stock market is complex and unpredictable, and short-term fluctuations can be influenced by a variety of factors, including economic events, news, investor emotions, and macroeconomic conditions. In short, the concept of Mr. Market in the book The Intelligent Investor highlights the importance of separating short-term fluctuations in the market from the true long-term prospects of a company. Graham emphasizes that investors should base their investment decisions on sound fundamental analysis and not get carried away by emotions and daily market fluctuations. One of the key lessons Graham seeks to convey is that investors should be more like business owners than mere speculators. By understanding the nature of the companies they are investing in, their financial health, growth potential, and intrinsic value, investors can make more informed and prudent decisions. The approach of Mr. Mercado also serves as a warning not to follow the crowd and not to give in to herd behavior. The stock market is susceptible to collective feelings of euphoria and panic, which can lead to extreme price movements. Smart investors recognize the importance of maintaining discipline and rationality, even when Mr. Market is in an extreme emotional state. Graham points out that success in investing is not about trying to predict short-term market movements, but about taking a long-term approach focused on buying undervalued assets and selling overvalued assets. Patience and the ability to weather market fluctuations are essential qualities that smart investors must cultivate.
It is important to note that Mr. Mercado does not devalue the importance of technical analysis or monitoring market trends. These elements can be useful for identifying short-term patterns and opportunities. However, fundamental analysis and understanding the intrinsic value of companies are considered fundamental for making sound and sustainable investment decisions. 5. The Irrational Behavior of the Stock Market, an analysis based on the book The Intelligent Investor. Introduction the stock market is often characterized by fluctuations and volatility that seem to defy logic and rationality. While classical economic theory assumes that market participants are rational and make informed decisions, reality often reveals irrational behaviors that significantly influence stock prices. In this text, we will explore the concept of irrational behavior in the stock market based on Benjamin Graham's classic book, The Intelligent Investor. 1. The Emotional Investor One of the main sources of irrational behavior in the stock market is the influence of emotions on investment decisions. According to The Intelligent Investor, investors often get carried away by fear, greed, and euphoria, which can result in hasty decisions that are out of line with fundamental analysis. The author highlights the importance of controlling emotions and adopting a disciplined approach to investing smartly. 2. Cognitive bias Another factor that contributes to irrational behavior is the presence of cognitive biases. Human beings are prone to systematic distortions in the way they process information and make decisions. Graham's book mentions biases such as overconfidence, loss aversion, and the hurt effect, which lead investors to make irrational choices and follow the crowd, rather than analyzing companies' fundamentals. 3. Market Efficiency One of the main criticisms of irrational behavior in the stock market is the challenge it poses to the theory of market efficiency. Under the efficient market hypothesis, stock prices reflect all available information and are therefore always fair and correct. However, irrational behavior can distort prices, leading to investment opportunities or speculative bubbles. 4. Opportunities for the Smart Investor Despite irrational market trends, the smart investor highlights that profitable opportunities can be found by taking a smart, anti-the-crowd approach to investing. By identifying undervalued companies through careful analysis of fundamentals, the investor can benefit from market swings and build a solid long-term investment portfolio. Conclusion The irrational behavior of the stock market is a reality that challenges the classic view of rational investors and efficient markets. However, by understanding the emotions and cognitive biases that influence investment decisions, it is possible to take a smart, disciplined approach to identifying profitable opportunities. Reading Benjamin Graham's The Intelligent Investor provides valuable insights on how to navigate this volatile environment and take advantage of market fluctuations. By recognizing the influence of emotions such as fear and greed, the investor can become more aware of his own irrational tendencies and seek the emotional balance necessary to make informed decisions. This includes avoiding impulsive reactions in the face of sudden price drops or exaggerated euphoria at times of highs. Furthermore, understanding the cognitive biases that affect decision-making is essential to avoid common pitfalls. Overconfidence can lead to an incorrect assessment of risk, while loss aversion can cause investors to hang on to undervalued stocks expecting an unlikely recovery. The hurt effect, in turn, can lead to decisions based on the influence of others rather than sound fundamentals. Although irrational behavior can distort stock prices, the theory of market efficiency is not completely ruled out. It is important to recognize that the market is not always efficient in the short term, but tends to approach relative efficiency in the long term. 
Therefore, smart investors seek to identify investment opportunities based on sound fundamental analysis and long-term prospects. Finally, the smart investor understands that market fluctuations can create opportunities to acquire quality stocks at discounted prices. By taking an anti-the-crowd approach and identifying undervalued companies, it is possible to build a strong, diversified portfolio capable of overcoming the effects of irrational market behavior. In short, irrational stock market behavior is a reality that can significantly influence stock prices. However, by taking a disciplined approach that is aware of emotions and cognitive biases, it is possible to identify investment opportunities and build a strong foundation for long-term financial success. 6. Evaluation of the Intrinsic Value of a Company and Economic Analysis Introduction Evaluating the intrinsic value of a company is a fundamental task for investors, financial analysts, and economists. This valuation seeks to determine the real value of a company based on its financial fundamentals, operational, and future prospects. In this text, we will explore the main methods used in assessing the intrinsic value of a company, providing a comprehensive view of this fundamental process. 1. Fundamental Analysis Fundamental analysis is a commonly used approach to assessing a company's intrinsic value. It involves detailed analysis of the company's financial data such as financial statements, cash flow, balance sheet, and income statement. The objective is to understand the financial health of the company, its ability to generate profits and cash flow, as well as the quality of its assets. 2. Valuation Methods There are several valuation methods that can be applied in determining the intrinsic value of a company. Some of the most used are Market Multiples This approach involves comparing the financial multiples, such as price-slash-earnings, price-slash-book value and price-slash-sales, of the company under analysis with those of other similar companies in the same industry. This allows you to get an estimate of the company's relative value in relation to the market. Discounted Cash Flow DCF, the discounted cash flow method is widely used in valuing companies. It involves projecting the company's future cash flows and bringing them to present value using an appropriate discount rate. This provides an estimate of the present value of the company's future cash flows. Asset Valuation This method involves calculating the value of the company's tangible and intangible assets, such as real estate, equipment, trademarks, and patents. The sum of these values can provide an estimate of the intrinsic value of the company. 3. Qualitative Factors In addition to financial and quantitative aspects, the assessment of a company's intrinsic value also takes into account qualitative factors. This includes analyzing the company's competitive position, the quality of its management team, its business strategy, the perspective of the sector in which it operates and possible risks and uncertainties. 4. Limitations and Challenges it is important to recognize the limitations and challenges of assessing a company's intrinsic value. The inherent uncertainty of the future of business, changes in the economic environment and market fluctuations can make it difficult for estimates to be accurate. In addition, subjectivity in choosing the discount rate and the limited availability of accurate information can also affect the valuation results. Conclusion, assessing the intrinsic value of a company is a complex activity that requires a detailed analysis of its financial fundamentals and a holistic understanding of the environment in which the company operates. Combining quantitative methods such as fundamental analysis and discounted cash flow, along with qualitative factors, allows for a more comprehensive and accurate assessment. It is important to emphasize that the assessment of intrinsic value is not an exact science and is subject to several limitations. 
The future of companies and markets is uncertain, and projections and estimates may be subject to errors. In addition, interpretation of financial data and selection of valuation methods may vary among analysts, which may result in different estimates of value. Despite these challenges, intrinsic value assessment remains a valuable tool for investors and analysts as it provides a solid foundation for making investment decisions. By understanding the company's fundamentals, identifying its strengths and weaknesses, and analyzing future prospects, investors can make more informed decisions and pursue investment opportunities based on the company's true value. In short, assessing a company's intrinsic value plays a key role in investment analysis. Through fundamental analysis, the use of different valuation methods and the consideration of qualitative factors, economists can estimate the real value of a company and make more informed investment decisions. While there are challenges and uncertainties associated with this valuation, it remains an essential tool for understanding a company's value beyond market fluctuations. 7. The margin of safety as protection against risks, an economic analysis based on the book The Sincere Economist. Introduction. In the world of investments, risks and uncertainties are inevitable. Investors are constantly exposed to market fluctuations, volatility, and economic unpredictability. In this context, the safety margin emerges as an important approach for protection against risks and uncertainties. In this text, we will explore the margin of safety as a key concept, based on the ideas presented in the book O Economista Sincero. 1. Definition of Margin of Safety The margin of safety, as defended in the book O Economista Sincero, refers to the difference between the intrinsic value of an investment and its market price. It is a form of protection against risks, uncertainties, and errors of judgment. By purchasing an asset with an adequate margin of safety, investors guard against significant losses should market conditions deteriorate or unforeseen events occur. 2. Risk and Uncertainty Analysis Margin of safety involves a careful analysis of the risks and uncertainties associated with an investment. Candid economists highlight the importance of understanding factors that can affect an asset's future performance, such as macroeconomic conditions, regulatory changes, competition, and industry-specific risks. This detailed analysis makes it possible to determine the necessary safety margin to compensate for such risks. 3. Valuing Investments Margin of safety plays a crucial role in valuing investments. Rather than simply looking for assets that are trading below intrinsic value, candid economists emphasize the importance of establishing an adequate safety margin relative to intrinsic value. This defensive approach allows investors to protect their capital and minimize potential losses in the event of adverse events. 4. Importance of Discipline and Patience The margin of safety requires discipline and patience on the part of investors. You have to resist the pressure to follow the crowd and buy overvalued assets. Instead, sincere economists encourage waiting for opportunities where the margin of safety is significant. This may require waiting for periods of volatility or market pessimism, but the payoff is in risk protection and the prospect of more consistent returns. Conclusion The margin of safety, as discussed in the book O Economista Sincero, offers a valuable perspective for protection against risks and uncertainties in investments. By establishing a significant difference between an asset's intrinsic value and its market price, investors can mitigate the adverse effects of unforeseen events or unfavorable market conditions. Discipline and patience are key to waiting for opportunities that offer an adequate safety margin. Furthermore, risk and uncertainty analysis plays a crucial role in determining the necessary safety margin.
Understanding the factors that may affect the future performance of an investment allows for a more accurate assessment of the risks involved. This includes considering both macroeconomic and industry factors as well as company-specific risks. It is worth noting that the margin of safety does not guarantee profit or completely eliminate risks. It is a risk management strategy that seeks to minimize potential losses and increase the chances of obtaining satisfactory returns over time. However, it is important to recognize that determining the appropriate safety margin is not a simple task. It requires analytical skills, market knowledge, and a deep understanding of the fundamentals of companies and the factors that influence their performance. In summary, margin of safety is an essential approach to protecting against risk and uncertainty in investments. Based on the ideas presented in the book The Sincere Economist, it involves establishing a difference between the intrinsic value of an asset and its market price, taking into account the risks involved. By taking this approach, investors can pursue opportunities with less exposure to significant losses increasing their chances of earning consistent returns and protecting their capital over time. 8. Value Investing Strategies An Approach Based on the Book The Intelligent Investor Introduction Value investment strategies are based on the principle of acquiring financial assets for a price lower than their intrinsic value, seeking to maximize the return potential and minimize the risk. In the classic book The Intelligent Investor, Benjamin Graham explores these strategies in detail, which have become a reference in the investment world. In this text, we will discuss the main value investing strategies covered in the book, highlighting their relevance and benefits for investors. 1. Fundamental Analysis One of the main bases of value investing strategies is fundamental analysis. This involves a careful analysis of a company's financial and operating fundamentals, such as its financial statements, cash flow, balance sheet, and growth prospects. The objective is to identify undervalued companies whose intrinsic value is greater than the market price, creating investment opportunities. 2. Margin of Safety The Margin of Safety a fundamental concept in the book The Intelligent Investor plays a central role in value investing strategies. It involves purchasing an asset at a significant discount to its estimated intrinsic value. The safety margin offers investors additional protection, mitigating the risks inherent in market projections and uncertainties. By buying with an adequate margin of safety, Investors reduce the possibility of substantial losses and increase their chances of earning satisfactory returns. 3. Long-Term Investing Another key aspect of value investing strategies is the long-term focus. Benjamin Graham emphasizes the importance of investing with a broad time perspective, ignoring short-term market fluctuations. By taking a long-term approach, investors can benefit from market revaluation and realization of the intrinsic value of chosen companies, regardless of temporary price swings. 4. Diversification and Patience Diversification is an important element of value investing strategies. Graham recommends building a well-diversified portfolio, with different assets in different sectors. Diversification reduces a company's specific risks and allows investors to seize value opportunities across different sectors and markets. Also, patience is essential. Value investors recognize that finding investment opportunities takes time and careful research. They patiently wait for favorable market times and for undervalued companies that fit established investment criteria. Bottom line, value investing strategies, as covered in the Smart Investor book, offer a solid, grounded approach for investors. Based on fundamental analysis, 
9. Analyse financiera e relatorios de empresas, uma perspectiva do livro o investidor inteligente. Introduco. A analyse financiera e os relatorios de empresas de sempenem um papel fundamental na tomada de decisos de investimento informadas. No livro clássico o investidor inteligente, escrito por Benjamin Graham. São abordados os principios e metodos para realizar uma análise financeira eficaz. Neste texto, exploraremos a importância de análise financeira e dos relatórios de empresas para os investidores, com base nas ideas apresentadas no livro. 1. Fundamentos de análise financeira a análise financeira envolve a avalia queo minuciosa dos aspectos financeiros de uma empresa, incluindo suas demonstracos financeiras, balanco patrimonial, demonstraco de resultados e fluxo de caixa. O objetivo é compreender a sod financeira e a capacidade de empresa de gerar lucros consistentes no longo prazo. A trace dessa analyse, os investidores podem identificar os pontos fortes e fracas de empresa e tomar decisos de investimento ambassadas. 2. Interpretaqueo dos relatorios financeiros, os relatorios financeiros, como o balanco patrimonial e a demonstraco de resultados, fornecem informacos essenciais para a análise financeira. No livro O Investidor Intelligent, Graham enfatiza a importância de uma interpretação cuidadosa desses relatórios. Os investidores devem analisar a qualidade das receitas, despesas, ativos e passivos de empresa, buscando identificar tendências, padros e possíveis irregularidades que possam afetar sua avalia queo. 3. Avelia Keo, do valor intrinsico, a análise financeira e os relatórios de empresas são ferramentas cruciais para estimar o valor intrinsico de uma empresa. Graham defende a importância de determinar o valor real de uma empresa, independentemente do preco de mercado. A trace de análise dos relatórios financeiros e de aplicação de metodos como o fluxo de caixa descantado e a análise comparativa, os investidores podem chegar a uma estimativa mais precisa do valor intrinsico de uma empresa. 4. Fatores qualitativos e riscos, elem dos aspectos quantitativos. A análise financeira tambam leva em consideração fatores qualitativos. Como a qualidade de gesto, a reputaco de empresa e o ambiente competitivo em que ela opera. Esses fatores podem ter um impacto significativo no desempenho financeiro e na capacidade de criação de valor de uma empresa. Elem disso, a análise financeira tamba ajuda a identificar e avaliar os riscos associados a uma empresa permitindo que os investidores avaliem os riscos potenciais de seus investimentos. Concluso, a análise financeira e os relatórios de empresas são ferramentas indispensáveis para os investidores, conforme destacado no livro O Investidor Intelligent. A trace dessa análise, os investidores podem compreender a sod financeira de uma empresa, Estimar SEU valor intrinsico e identificar riscos potenciais. Eo adutar uma abordagem fundamentada na análise financeira, os investidores podem tomar decisos. Ten use of financial indicators in stock valuation, an analysis based on the book The Intelligent Investor. Introduction. In the investment world, stock valuation plays a crucial role in making informed decisions. The book The Intelligent Investor, written by Benjamin Graham, introduces principles and methods for stock analysis. In this text, we will explore the use of financial indicators in the valuation of stocks, based on the ideas presented in the book. 
1. Value indicators. Value indicators are tools used to assess whether a stock is undervalued or overvalued in relation to its market price. The book The Intelligent Investor highlights some common indicators, such as price slash book value, P slash PV, price slash earnings, PE, and price slash cash flow, P slash CF. These indicators allow you to compare a stock's market price to key measures of its intrinsic value, providing insights into its upside potential. 2. Profitability Indicators Profitability indicators assess a company's ability to generate profits for its shareholders. Some key metrics include return on equity, ROE, return on assets, ROA, and net margin. These indicators make it possible to analyze a company's operational efficiency and profitability, providing valuable information about its ability to generate consistent returns over the long term. 3. Indebtedness Indicators Indebtedness indicators help to assess a company's financial risk. Some common metrics are debt-to-equity ratio, debt-total assets ratio, and interest coverage. These indicators provide insight into a company's capital structure and its ability to meet its financial obligations. Risk-conscious investors can use these indicators to identify companies with healthy debt levels and avoid those that may face financial difficulties. 4. Operating Efficiency Indicators Operating efficiency indicators help to assess the efficiency with which a company uses its resources to generate revenue. Some relevant indicators are gross margin, operating margin, and inventory turnover. These indicators make it possible to understand the efficiency of a company's operations, its ability to control costs, and its inventory management. Investors can use these indicators to identify companies with competitive advantages and operational efficiency, which can indicate long-term growth potential. 5. Limitations of Financial Indicators It is important to point out that financial indicators have their limitations and should be used in conjunction with a more comprehensive analysis. Financial metrics provide valuable insights, but they don't tell the whole story about a company. It is essential to consider qualitative factors, such as the quality of management, the competitive position in the market, and the regulatory environment in which the company operates. Furthermore, financial indicators mostly reflect past data and cannot predict the future with absolute certainty. Therefore, it is crucial to complement the analysis of financial indicators with a more comprehensive fundamental analysis, taking into account the company's business strategy, industry prospects, macroeconomic trends, and other relevant factors. In the book The Intelligent Investor, Benjamin Graham highlights the importance of considering the margin of safety when using financial indicators. Margin of safety involves buying a stock at a price significantly below its estimated intrinsic value in order to protect the investor against possible misjudgments or adverse events. In addition, it is critical to maintain a long term approach when using financial indicators in valuing stocks. Short-term fluctuations in the market can distort the indicators, but over time, solid companies with healthy financial fundamentals tend to generate positive returns. Conclusion The use of financial indicators in stock valuation, as discussed in the book The Intelligent Investor, is a fundamental practice for investors in search of informed decision-making. Value, Profitability Debt and operating efficiency indicators provide valuable information about a company's financial performance and health. However, it is important to recognize the limitations of financial indicators and complement the analysis with a broader view and broader fundamental assessment. By using financial indicators prudently, considering the margin of safety and adopting a long-term perspective, Investors can increase their chances of identifying promising investment opportunities and achieving satisfactory results. 
11. Adequate Diversification of the Investment Portfolio, a Perspective Based on the Book The Intelligent Investor Introduction Adequate diversification of the investment portfolio is a crucial strategy to minimize risks and maximize return opportunities. In the classic book The Intelligent Investor, written by Benjamin Graham, important guidelines on diversification are presented. In this text, we will explore the importance of adequate portfolio diversification, the principles recommended by Graham and the benefits that this strategy can provide to investors. 1. Rationale of Diversification Diversification is based on the premise that allocating investments across asset classes and sectors reduces unsystematic risk, also known as company-specific or industry-specific risk. Graham highlights the importance of avoiding excessive concentration on a single investment, as this exposes the investor to disproportionate risk. Proper diversification aims to mitigate these risks by spreading investments across different areas. 2. Adequate number of investments Graham recommends that investors diversify their portfolios but also emphasizes that there is no fixed rule for the exact number of investments needed. He suggests that at least a minimum number of 10 to 30 stocks is needed for effective diversification. The objective is to own a sufficient number of assets to reduce the specific risk and allow the positive returns of some stocks to offset possible losses of others. 3. Diversification across asset classes in addition to diversifying across individual stocks, Graham stresses the importance of diversifying across different asset classes, such as stocks, bonds, real estate, and commodities. Diversification across asset classes reduces exposure to class-specific risks, providing additional protection against market volatility. This diversification also allows investors to take advantage of growth opportunities in different sectors and benefit from varying economic cycles. 4. Assessing Risks and Expected Returns Proper diversification requires careful assessment of the risks and expected returns of each investment. Graham emphasizes the importance of considering a stock's upside potential against its associated risk. Diversification should not be done indiscriminately, but based on fundamental analyzes and careful assessments of the prospects of each investment. 5. Portfolio Rebalancing Another important aspect of diversification is regular portfolio rebalancing. As stock prices and other assets fluctuate, the initial allocation may deviate from plan. Rebalancing involves adjusting the distribution of investments to maintain adequate diversification. This allows investors to take profits on investments that have performed strongly and redirect resources to those that may be undervalued. 6. Geographic Diversification In addition to diversifying across asset classes, Graham also emphasizes the importance of geographic diversification. Investing in different geographic regions can reduce the risk of concentration in a single economy or market. By diversifying globally, investors can capitalize on growth opportunities in different countries and mitigate the impact of events specific to a particular region. 7. Attention to Correlation Effective diversification involves considering the correlation between portfolio assets. Correlation measures the relationship between the price movements of different assets. Highly correlated investments may offer less diversification benefits. Therefore, it is important to look for assets with a low or negative correlation so that gains from one investment can offset any losses in others. 8. Maintaining a long-term view Graham emphasizes that proper diversification is a long-term strategy. Investors should avoid trying to predict short-term market movements and focus on building a solid and balanced portfolio over time. Proper diversification helps reduce portfolio volatility 
and increases the chances of achieving consistent long-term returns. 9. Attention to costs and fees. When diversifying the portfolio, it is important to take into account the costs and associated fees. Investors should look for low-cost investment options, such as index funds or exchange-traded funds, ETFs, which offer exposure to a wide range of assets. Reducing investment expenses is essential to maximizing net returns over time. 10. Monitoring and Adjustments Adequate diversification requires continuous monitoring of the portfolio. It is important to periodically review asset allocation, assess investment performance, and make adjustments accordingly. 12. Assessing a company's growth potential, a comprehensive economic approach. Introduction. Assessing a company's growth potential is a fundamental activity for investors and financial analysts. By identifying companies with solid expansion prospects, investors can make informed decisions about resource allocation. In this text, we will explore how economists approach the assessment of a company's growth potential, considering key factors that impact its future growth. 1. Market Analysis and Industry Trends A comprehensive assessment of a company's growth potential begins with an analysis of market and industry trends. Economists consider macroeconomic factors, such as the rate of GDP growth, government policies, and demographic trends, which can positively or negatively affect the industry in which the company operates. This analysis helps identify growth sectors and general market conditions that may influence the company's future performance. 2. Analysis of Competitive Advantages Competitive advantages are fundamental for the sustainable growth of a company. Economists evaluate the competitive advantages, such as product differentiation, patented technology, production scale, scope or cost savings that allow the company to gain and maintain a dominant position in the market. A company with strong competitive advantages is more likely to expand its market share and drive long-term growth. 3. Financial Analysis Financial analysis plays an important role in assessing the growth potential of a company. Economists look at financial metrics such as revenue growth, profit margins, return on equity, and operating efficiency. A consistent track record of healthy financial growth is an indication that the company has the capacity to grow its business. In addition, economists evaluate a company's capital structure and its ability to finance growth initiatives. 4. Innovation and Research and Development R&D, the capacity for innovation and investment in R&D are key indicators of a company's growth potential. Economists analyze the allocation of resources to research and development activities, as well as the rate of introduction of new products or services to the market. Companies that demonstrate a commitment to innovation are more likely to adapt to market changes meet consumer demands, and gain competitive advantage in the long term. 5. Geographical Expansion and Acquisitions Geographical expansion and strategic acquisitions are also considered in assessing a company's growth potential. Economists analyze the company's ability to expand its operations into new markets, both domestically and internationally. In addition, they assess whether the company has a successful acquisition strategy that can drive growth through market consolidation or customer base growth. 6. Analysis of the regulatory and legal environment The regulatory and legal environment can have a significant impact on a company's growth potential. Economists evaluate government policies industry regulations, and changes in legislation that may positively or negatively affect a company's growth prospects. A company that operates in a favorable regulatory environment and has a solid strategy for dealing with potential regulatory changes is more likely to achieve sustainable growth. 7. Management Team Analysis 
The quality of the management team is a critical factor in assessing a company's growth potential. Economists analyze the experience, skills, and strategic vision of the company's key executives. A competent and committed management team is able to make the right decisions, identify growth opportunities, and successfully implement expansion strategies. 8. Adaptability Analysis The business environment is constantly changing, and companies that have the ability to adapt quickly are more likely to achieve sustainable growth. Economists analyze a company's ability to adapt to new technologies, changes in consumer preferences, market developments, and competition. An agile and flexible company is more likely to identify opportunities for growth and remain relevant over time. Conclusion The assessment of a company's growth potential, as discussed in the book The Intelligent Investor, is a complex process that involves the analysis of multiple factors. Economists consider macroeconomic factors, competitive advantages, financial analysis, innovation, geographic expansion, regulatory environment, management team and adaptability. 13. Investimento M. Acos de Impresas Solidas e Com Historico Comprovado, Uma Abordagem Economica Abrangent. Introduco. O investimento em acos de impressas solidas e com historico comprovado e uma estratégia amplamente adotada por economistas e investidores experientes. Nest texto, discutiremos a importância de investir em impressas com fundamentos solidos e um historico de desempenho consistente ao longo do tempo, basado em uma abordagem económica abrangente. 1. Avelia Keo dos Fundamentos de Empresa, AO Investor M. Acos de Empresas Solidas, OS Economistas Enfatizam a Importancia de Avaliar OS Fundamentos de Empresa. Isso inclui analyser, sus demonstrativos financeros, como balanco patrimonial, demonstrico de resultados e fluxo de caixa, a FIM de compreender SUA, sod financiera. Lucrativitate e capacidade de gerar fluxo de caixa consistent. Alam disso, os economistas consideram a qualidade dos ativos de empresa, SUA posiqueo de mercado, vantagens competitivas e a qualidade de SUA gesto. 2. Historico de desempenho consistent, investor em impressas com um historico comprovado de desempenho consistent e fundamental. OS Economistas Analysum o Disempenho Passado de Empresa, Observando SEU Crescimento de Recida, Lucratividade e Retorno sobre o Patrimonio Liquido e o Longo do Tempo. Empresas que apresentam um historico solido de resultados positivos, tem maior probabilidade de continuar entregando resultados positivos no futuro. 3. Analise do Setor e Mercado a analyst do setor e mercado M K empresa atua a um aspecto importante a o investor M acos de empresas solidas. OS economistas examinam as condicos economicas de as tendências do setor, a concorrência e as perspectivas de crescimento. Investor M impresses K opram M setors com boas perspectivas de crescimento podam enter as chances de obter retornos positivos. 4. Gesto competent e estrategia de negocios, a qualidade de gesto e a estrategia de negocios de sempenem um papel fundamental na avelia queo de impresas solidas. OS economistas analysum a experiencia e habilidades de equipe de gesto. SUA capacidade de tomar decisos acertadas, adapter se a mudancas, no ambiente de negocios e executor estrategias de longo prazo. Impressas com uma gesto competent e uma estrategia solida tem maior probabilidade de enfrentar desafios e aprovador oportunidades de crescimento. 5. Analise de risco e volatilidade, AO investor M acos de impressas solidas. OS Economistas, Tambum Avalium OS Riscos Associados. 
A volatilidade do mercado, riscos setoriais e riscos específicos de empresas são considerados. Uma analisa brangen dos riscos ajuda os investidores a tomar decisos em forma das e a diversificar adequadamente suas carteiras, a FIM de reduzir a expósico a riscos desnecessarios. 6. Analisa de valor e preco gesto, uma abelha queo adequada do investimento em acos de empresas solidas envolve a analisa de valor e o estabelecimento de um preco gesto. Os economistas utilizam uma variedade de técnicas, como a análise fundamentalista e a avalia queo por multiplos, para determinar o valor intrínseco de empresa. Essa análise envolve a projeção de fluxos de caixa futuros, a aplicação de taxas de desconto apropriadas e a consideração de outros fatores relevantes. Comparando o valor intrinsico estimado com o preco de mercado atual, os economistas podem identificar oportunidades de investimento em empresas com um preco abexo de SEU valor real. 7. Diversificação de cartera. A diversificação de cartera é um elemento crucial a o investor em acos de empresas solidas. Os economistas recomendam a alicaco de recursos em diferentes setores e empresas para reduzir o risco específico de cada investimento. A diversificação permite que os investidores se beneficiem de diferentes oportunidades de crescimento e mitigam os riscos associados a um único investimento. Dessa forma, mesmo que uma empresa específica on front de safios, a carteira como um to do pod continuar apresentando resultados positivos. 8. Monitoramento continuo e reavalia queo. Investor em acos de empresas solidas neo se trata apenas de uma análise initial, mas tambam recor um monitoramento continuo e uma reavalia queo periodica. Os economistas acompanham os desenvolvimentos de empresa, as medancas no setor e as condicos macroeconomicas que podem afetar o desempenho de empresa a o longo do tempo. Isso permite que ajustem suas estratégias de investimento conforme necessário, garantindo que continuam investindo em empresas com solidos fundamentos e perspectivas de crescimento. Concluso Investor em acos de empresas solidas e com historico comprovado requer uma abordagem económica abrangente. Os economistas avaliam os fundamentos de empresa, SEU histórico de desempenho consistente, o contexto, do setor e mercado, a qualidade de gesto, a análise de risco, a avaliação de valor e a diversificação de cartera. Essa abordagem visa identificar empresas com perspectivas de crescimento solidas e reduzir os riscos associados a o investimento em acos. É importante ressaltar que o investimento em acos sempre envolve riscos, e os resultados passados neo garantem o desempenho futuro. Portanto, é recomendable que os investidores buscam aconselhamento profissional e realizam sua própria análise antes de tomar decisos de investimento. 14. Análise de Belenco Patrimonial, compreendendo a sod financeira das empresas. Introduco. A análise de Belenco Patrimonial é uma ferramenta essencial na avalia queo de sod financeira de uma empresa. Como economistas, reconhemos a importância de examinar os componentes do balanco patrimonial para compreender a posicão financeira, a liquidez, a solvência e a eficiência operacional de empresa. Neste texto, exploraremos a importância de análise de balanco patrimonial e como ela pode fornecer insights valiosos sobre o desempenho financeiro das empresas. 1. Estrutura e Components do Belenco Patrimonial O Belenco Patrimonial é composto por três elementos principais, ativos, passivos e patrimonial liquido. 
Os ativos representam os recursos contralados pela empresa, como caixa, investimentos, contas a receber e propriedades. Os passivos são as obrigacos financeiras de empresa, como emprestimos, contas a pagar e impostos devidos. O patrimonio liquido é a diferença entre ativos e passivos e representa o valor liquido dos acionistas na empresa. 2. Liquidez e solvencia. A analista balanco patrimonial permite avaliar a liquidez e a solvencia de empresa. A liquidez refere-se a capacidade de uma empresa de cumprir suas obrigacos de curto prazo. A traves de analista dos ativos circulantes, como caixa e contas a receber, e dos passivos circulantes, como contas a pagar e dividas de curto prazo. Podemos determinar se a empresa possui recursos suficientes para cobrir suas obrigacos imediatas. A solvencia, por sua vez, diz respeito a capacidade de uma empresa de cumprir suas obrigacos de longo prazo. A o analisar os ativos de longo prazo e os passivos de longo prazo. Podemos determinar se a empresa possui recursos suficientes para pagar suas dívidas de longo prazo. 3. Eficiência operacional. A analista de balanco patrimonial tambem fornece informação sobre a eficiência operacional de uma empresa. Isso inclui a analista dos ativos operacionais, como estoques e maquinas, em relicao, as receitas e aos passivos operacionais. Como contas a pagar e emprestimos, em relicao aos custos. Essas analises podem ajudar a identificar oportunidades de melhoria na gesto dos recursos de empresa, bem como avaliar sua eficiência na utilização de ativos para gerar receitas. 4. Estrutura de capital. A estrutura de capital de uma empresa, ou you say a. A proporco entre dívida e patrimonio liquido, tambem pode ser avaliada por meio de analista de balanco patrimonial. Os economistas consideram a estrutura de capital para entender o risco financeiro de empresa. Uma empresa com alta alavancagem financeira, alto nível de endividamento, pode apresentar maior risco em caso de dificuldades financeiras. Enquanto uma empresa com uma estrutura de capital mais equilibrada pode ter maior estabilidade financeira. 5. Analista tendências. A analista balanco patrimonial tambem permite identificação de tendências ao longo do tempo. Comparar os balancos patrimoniais de diferentes periodos pode revelar medancas significativas nos ativos. Passivos e patrimonio liquido de empresa. Isso possibilita a identificação de padros, como um crescimento consistente dos ativos, uma reduco de dívida ao longo, do tempo ou fluxuecos no patrimonio liquido. Essas tendências podem fornecer insights valiosos sobre a sad financeira e o desempenho de empresa. Permitindo aos economistas avaliar se a empresa está progredindo de forma consistente ou enfrentando desafios. 6. Compra que o com o setor e pairs, uma analista balanco patrimonial eficaz, tambem involve a compra que o dos números de empresa com as medias do setor e com empresas similares, pairs. Isso ajuda a entender o desempenho relativo de empresa em relicao ao seu setor e a identificar pontos fortes e fracos. Por exemplo, se a empresa apresenta uma margem de lucro liquido mais alta do que a media do setor, isso pode indicar uma vantagem competitiva. Por outro lado, se a empresa possui uma dívida maior em compra que o com seus pairs, Pode representar um risco adicional. Essa análise comparativa amplia a compreensão de posicão financeira de empresa e auxilia na tomada de decisos de investimento informadas. 7. Limitacos de análise de balanco patrimonial. 
a importante reconhecer as limitacos de analis de Belenco patrimonio. OS Numeros presents Nel Belenco Reflita Muma Pazaqueo Financiera M. Um Determinado Memento e Podem Neo Capture Eventos Recents OU Futuros. Alam Disso, a analis de Belenco Patrimonial Neo Considera Fetors Externos, Como Medencas Regulatorias, Fluchuicos Economicas OU Eventos Imprevistos. Portanto, a essential complementar a analis de Belenco com outras métricas e informacos relevantes para obter uma viseo completa de sod financiera de empresa. Concluso, a analis de Belenco patrimonial de simpenia um papel fundamental na avelia queo de sod financiera das empresas. Por meio dessa analis, os economistas podem compreender a liquidez, solvencia, Eficiencia operational e estrutura de capital de uma empresa. Elam disso, a compra que o com o setter e pers ajuda a identificar o desempenho relativo de empresa. No entanto, a importante lembrar que a analista de Belenco patrimonial deve ser complementada com outras analises e informacos para obter uma avalia que o completa de empresa. A compreenso dos fundamentos financeros por meio de analis de Belenco patrimonial auxilia os economistas a tomar decisos informadas e a identificar oportunidades e riscos associados aos investimentos. 15. The Income Statement Understanding the Financial Performance of Companies Introduction The Income Statement, also known as Income Statement, is one of the main tools used by economists to assess the financial performance of a company. It provides crucial information about revenues, costs, expenses, and profits made during a given period. In this text, we will explore the importance of the income statement and how it can provide valuable insights into the operational efficiency, profitability, and growth of companies. 1. Income Statement Components The income statement is made up of several key elements, including a. Operating revenues, represent sales and other revenues generated by the main activities of the company. b. Operating costs and expenses, these include direct and indirect costs associated with the production and supply of the company's products or services, as well as administrative and commercial expenses. C. Gross profit, obtained by subtracting operating costs and expenses from operating revenues. Gross profit reflects the company's gross profitability before considering other factors, such as taxes and interest. D. Financial expenses, these represent the costs associated with financing the company, such as interest on loans or financing fees. E. Taxes reflect the tax burden on the company's profit, which is determined by the applicable tax laws. f. Net profit, obtained by subtracting financial expenses and taxes from gross profit. Net profit represents the final profit after all costs and expenses. 2. Evaluating operating efficiency. The income statement allows economists to evaluate a company's operating efficiency. By analyzing operating revenues in relation to operating costs and expenses, it is possible to determine the company's ability to generate profits from its core activities. This analysis helps identify the gross margin, which indicates the company's profitability before considering factors such as financial expenses and taxes. In addition, analyzing trends over time can reveal a company's efficiency and operating performance. 3. Profitability and Return on Investment The income statement also provides information about the company's profitability and return on investment. By analyzing net income relative to equity or total assets, economists can assess a company's effectiveness in generating profits relative to invested capital. This helps determine whether the company is maximizing the return on its investments and whether it is creating shareholder value. 4. Margin Analysis 
margin analysis is another important application of the income statement. It involves analyzing the company's gross operating and net margins. The gross margin indicates the profitability of the sales after deducting direct production costs. The operating margin reflects the profitability of the company's main operations, considering operating costs. The net margin represents the final profitability of the company after deducting all expenses, including financial expenses and taxes. The analysis of these margins over time and in comparison with other companies in the sector allows identifying the company's efficiency in controlling costs and generating profits. 5. Trend Analysis The income statement is a valuable tool for identifying trends over time. By comparing financial data from different periods, it is possible to identify significant changes in the company's performance. For example, a consistent increase in revenues over the years could indicate healthy growth, while a disproportionate increase in expenses could signal operational problems. This trend analysis helps economists understand a company's financial trajectory and identify patterns that can influence investment decisions. 6. Comparison with Industry and Peers the income statement is also useful in comparing the company's financial performance with other companies in the industry or with its peers. By analyzing key indicators, such as profit margins or return on investment, relative to the industry average or similar companies, economists can assess a company's competitive position. This helps identify strengths and weaknesses as well as opportunities for improvement against competitors. 7. Limitations of the Income Statement It is important to emphasize the limitations of the income statement. It presents a retrospective view of the company's financial results and may not capture future events or significant changes in the business environment. In addition, the income statement does not provide a complete picture of the company's financial health requiring analysis in conjunction with other demonstrations. 16. The Importance of a Long-Term Mindset in Investments and the Economy Introduction Long-term thinking plays a crucial role in investments and the economy as a whole. While many investors and economic agents tend to seek quick returns and immediate results, a long-term approach offers a number of benefits. In this text, we will explore the importance of a long-term mindset, both for individual investors and for the economy as a whole, and how this approach can lead to more sustainable and stable results. 1. Stability and Resilience A long-term mindset promotes stability and resilience in investments and the economy. By taking a long-term view, investors are able to withstand short-term market fluctuations and volatilities. This makes it possible to avoid impulsive reactions to short-term events, such as financial crises or sudden fluctuations in asset prices. Instead, investors can stick to their long-term investment strategy and enjoy the benefits of consistent, sustainable growth. 2. Sustainable Growth A long-term mindset is closely linked to sustainable growth. Long-term investments and economic policies tend to prioritize long-term value creation rather than seeking quick, short-term returns. This allows for the development of projects and initiatives aimed at lasting benefits, such as investments in research and development, infrastructure, and education. These investments are critical to driving innovation increasing productivity, and promoting healthy and stable economic growth over time. 3. Risk Mitigation A long-term mindset also plays an important role in risk mitigation. By investing with a long-term perspective, investors can diversify their investment portfolios and reduce exposure to sector or asset-specific risks. Furthermore, a long-term approach allows investors to take a broader view and consider fundamental factors such as the quality of the company, 
its competitive position and its ability to generate consistent returns over time. This helps reduce the likelihood of significant losses and increases the resilience of investments. 4. Investments in public goods, a long-term mindset is key to promoting investments in public goods. Public goods such as infrastructure, education and scientific research are essential for long-term economic and social growth. However, these investments often require a longer time horizon, as their benefits can take years or decades to fully materialize. A long-term mindset allows policymakers and agents to economic leaders understand the importance of these investments and make decisions that benefit future generations. By prioritizing the development of public goods, it is possible to create a solid foundation for sustainable economic growth, improve people's quality of life and promote equal opportunities. 5. Building Lasting Relationships a long-term mindset is also crucial in building lasting and mutually beneficial relationships. In the business context, building solid and long-term partnerships can lead to mutual benefits such as access to resources, knowledge sharing, and stability in business relationships. By cultivating long-lasting relationships with suppliers, customers, and strategic partners, Companies can create a sustainable competitive advantage and protect themselves against uncertainty and sudden market changes. 6. Financial Planning and Foresight A long-term mindset plays a key role in financial planning and foresight. By taking a long-term approach, individuals are encouraged to save and invest for the future, ensuring lifelong financial security. This involves building a diversified investment portfolio, planning for retirement, and considering factors such as inflation, life expectancy, and future needs. A long-term mindset in financial planning allows individuals to achieve their long-term financial goals and be prepared for any unforeseen circumstances. 7. Socio-Environmental Responsibility a long-term mindset is also related to socio-environmental responsibility. By considering the impact of their actions on the environment and society, companies and investors can adopt sustainable and ethical practices that promote the preservation of natural resources, social well-being and equity. This approach considers not only short-term benefits, but also long-term consequences, creating 17. Identifying Companies Undervalued by the Market, a Strategic Approach Introduction Identifying companies that are undervalued by the market is a fundamental task for investors and financial analysts. These companies have significant upside potential, as their market price does not adequately reflect their true intrinsic value. In this text, we will explore the importance of identifying undervalued companies, the main methods and indicators used in this process and the potential benefits for investors. 1. Understanding the concept of undervaluation The undervaluation of a company occurs when the market price of its shares is below its intrinsic value. A company's intrinsic value represents its true valuation taking into account factors such as its assets, cash flows, growth potential, competitive position, and future prospects. Undervaluation can be caused by a variety of reasons, including lack of information or misperceptions of investors regarding the company. 2. Fundamental Analysis Fundamental analysis plays a central role in identifying undervalued companies. This approach seeks to understand the fundamentals of the company, examining its financial statements, its capital structure, its profitability indicators, its market position, and its business model. By performing an in-depth analysis, investors can identify companies that have an intrinsic value greater than their current market price, indicating possible undervaluation. 3. Financial indicators, several financial indicators can help identify undervalued companies. 
Some common examples include a. Price slash earnings ratio, PEPE -E, compares the share price with the earnings per share. A low PE relative to the industry can indicate an undervalued company. B. Equity value per share, VPA, the VPA compares the value of the company's net assets with the number of shares issued. A VPA greater than the market price indicates undervaluation. C. Discounted cash flow. DCF. The DCF estimates the present value of the company's future cash flows. If the estimated value is greater than the market price, it may indicate undervaluation. D. Dividend yield. The dividend yield compares the dividends distributed by the company with the market price of the share. A high yield can suggest undervaluation. 4. Benchmarking. Benchmarking is another useful strategy in identifying undervalued companies. It involves comparing the financial and operational metrics of the company in question with those of its direct competitors and the industry in which it operates. If the company has better or more favorable metrics, but its market price does not reflect this superiority, it could be a sign of undervaluation. 5. Potential benefits for investors, identifying undervalued companies can offer significant benefits to investors, such as a. Investment opportunities Growth and appreciation By investing in undervalued companies, investors have the opportunity to earn attractive returns when the market recognizes the true value of these companies. As the undervaluation is corrected, the stock price tends to rise providing gains to investors. b. Margin of safety. Investing in undervalued companies offers investors a margin of safety. Since the market price is below the intrinsic value, even if there are temporary fluctuations in the market, undervaluation provides additional protection against significant losses. C. Income generation. Many undervalued companies also pay attractive dividends. By investing in these companies, investors can enjoy a steady stream of income through distributed dividends, which contributes to the overall profitability of the investment. D. Recovery Potential Undervalued companies often have the potential to recover and prosper. By identifying companies with strong fundamentals, a proven track record and positive growth prospects, Investors can capitalize on these companies' recovery potential and realize significant long-term returns. e. Portfolio diversification. Investing in undervalued companies also allows you to diversify your investment portfolio. By including companies with different profiles, sectors, and characteristics, investors reduce concentration risk and increase portfolio resilience in different economic scenarios. Conclusion, identifying undervalued companies is a strategic approach that offers opportunities for growth, margin of safety, income generation, recovery potential, viewers, and portfolio diversification. First and foremost, I want to express fundamental my analysis, utmost gratitude the use to of each and every one of you and who took the time to watch the entire peers. video on Investors the Intelligent Investor Book Summary. Whose intrinsic value. Your commitment and dedication to expanding your knowledge in the realm of investing is truly commendable. In this video, we delved into the insightful and profound concepts presented in The Intelligent Investor a masterpiece penned by Benjamin Graham. This seminal work has had a profound impact on the investment community for decades, and it continues to be a beacon of wisdom for both novice and seasoned investors alike. Throughout the video, we aim to provide you with a concise yet comprehensive summary of the key principles outlined in the book. From the importance of value investing to the concept of margin of safety, Graham's teachings offer timeless wisdom that can guide us through the volatile and unpredictable world of investing. By understanding the fundamental principles espoused in The Intelligent Investor, you have taken a significant step towards becoming a more informed and astute investor. Investing is not merely about blindly following trends or seeking quick gains. 
It is a disciplined approach that requires careful analysis, patience, and a long-term perspective. Graham's book serves as a guiding light, illuminating the path to intelligent and rational investment decisions. Investing can be a daunting and complex endeavor, but with the right knowledge and mindset, it can also be immensely rewarding. By watching this video until the very end, you have demonstrated your commitment to continuous learning and personal growth. The fact that you sought out this summary video shows your dedication to enhancing your financial literacy and making informed choices for your future. I would also like to extend my gratitude to Benjamin Graham, whose wisdom and expertise continue to resonate with investors around the world. His invaluable teachings have empowered countless individuals to navigate the intricate world of investing with confidence and prudence. Lastly, I would like to thank you once again for your unwavering support. Your engagement, comments, and feedback inspire us to create more content that adds value to your lives. It is your presence and interaction that motivate us to continue producing informative and educational videos. Remember, investing is a lifelong journey, and the knowledge you have gained from watching this video is just the beginning. Stay curious, keep learning, and apply these principles in your investment decisions. By doing so, you are taking control of your financial future and working towards achieving your long term goals. Once again, thank you for watching this video until the end. Your dedication and commitment to expanding your knowledge are truly remarkable. We hope this summary has provided you with valuable insights and will serve as a catalyst for your growth as an intelligent investor. Wishing you all the best in your investment journey.